your time to assist with the Oregon City Comprehensive Plan Update Project. Um, I really look forward to working with you all in the months to come. Um, I just want to acknowledge again, like I just said, there are a lot of us and that um, is great in some ways because we have a lot of different perspectives and, and voices at the table. Um, it also poses some challenges. Um, but I'm sure that we can, uh, you know, make sure that and we'll, you know, try and continue finding ways to make sure that uh, everyone gets a chance to speak, that everyone's voice is heard. Um, obviously, we'd love to be visiting with you all in person and hope to do so at some point in the process. Um, but for the time being, we're going to be working with this virtual format. Um, I'm also going to just uh, apologize that for this first meeting tonight, um, the, the um, city staff and the consultant team is going to be doing a little more talking than we like to do normally at a meeting. Uh, we like to have a nice balance of presentation and discussion, and we'll make sure that we strike a, a better balance in that regard at future meetings. Um, I also want to remind everyone um, that <clears throat> this meeting is being recorded. It's going to be posted to the um, city's website, and that includes our breakout discussions that we're going to have later. So just want to make sure that everyone um, is aware of that. Um, as I mentioned briefly earlier, um, um, we're going to keep people on mute during presentations and then take you off of mute at other times. Um, a few notes. Number one, um, please take a look at um, what your name is displayed as um, and if you can change it to, to your name if it doesn't show that. Oh, something happened there, Any? Um, yeah, make sure your name says what you want it to say. And then um, another thing that we found is when people are giving presentation, uh, presentations that it, sometimes it's helpful to turn off your video um, so that it's a little less distracting for people watching the presentation. Um, so with that, uh, we want to start with introductions. Uh, my name is Steve Faust. I am the Community Planning Director with 3J Consulting, and we are um, really happy to be helping the city out with this comprehensive plan uh, update and vision process. Um, we're, uh, 3J Consulting is a land use, uh, public involvement, and civil engineering firm in Beaverton. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, as I, you can see on my screen. Uh, my colleague, Anise Mate and I will be supporting the public involvement efforts of the city. Um, our team also includes uh, OTAC, and Echo Northwest, who are not with us tonight, but um, you'll meet some of those folks at future meetings. Um, and with that, Annie, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to see all of you. My name is Anais Mate. I'm a land use planner and community engagement specialist. Um, and with Steve, we've worked on a number of comprehensive plans, and we're really excited um, to be here working for you guys uh, in the city of Oregon City. All right, let's have um, city staff introduce themselves, maybe starting with Pete. Hello, everybody. I'm Pete Walter. I'm senior planner and uh, main project manager for the OC 2040 project. It's really great to see you all. And uh, I hope that we do get to meet in person sometime in the future. Uh, thank you all for applying um, and being dedicated to this project. I'm really excited to see so many enthusiastic and such a diverse group of people as for part of this project. Uh, thank you. Uh, Laura, would you like to go next? Good evening. My name is Laura Turway. I serve the city as our community development director, so I support our building and our planning departments. I know John. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to, do you want me to unmute folks for introductions now, or do we start? Um, not, not quite yet. Um, I know John Lewis is in the... Oh. Uh, meeting, so I'll have him go next. I am John Lewis. I'm the Public Works Director for Oregon City. I also live in Oregon City, so happy to be here. Thanks. And do we have any other uh, city staff that want to introduce themselves? I just want to make sure before we move on. Yeah, yeah. I'm Kelsey. James Graham. Oh, I'm Sorry. Kelsey McNall. Sorry, Pete. I work with Pete and Laura in community development, um, but I work in the building division as a permit tech. Thanks for being here. I do see James. Yes, I'm James Gray. I'm Economic Development Manager for Oregon City. Nice to see all of you. Good to see you. 
And then my name is Rochelle Andrew Homparsh, and I'm the Aquatic and Recreation Manager for the City of Oregon City Parks and Recreation. So good to see everyone. Thank you. Okay, then um, I think what we'll do is um, I will we'll have everyone else um, introduce themselves um, at our project advisory team members. Um, and I think we'll, Annie, so you can unmute people. Um, I'll call, I think what I'll do is just call on people um, according to how you show up on my screen, just to make it easy. Um, and let's go ahead and start with uh, Mayor Holiday. Mayor Dan Holiday, City, we're gonna see. Short and to the point, thank you. Uh, Nicole, could you go next? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nicole Abraham, um, and I've lived around Oregon City um, since I was in high school. Um, recently purchased a house here and hoping to start a family here now. Well, welcome. Thank you. Anise, do you want to unmute Sherry so she can introduce herself? Yeah. <laughs> Just one second, Sherry. <laughs> Somebody asked me to unmute, sorry. I'm unmuting Sherry, but it's not. Okay, we'll come back to Sherry. Steve, can I butt in here a second? You sure can. It's, it's much easier, these things go much easier if you just leave, if everybody mutes themselves and you use the space bar as a push to talk microphone. Hmm. It takes way less time. Sounds good. I think for most people, that is a great uh, tip. Um, thank you for that. I think we have a few people who are having some, some challenges and we'll try to figure those out. So next, let's go to Chris Weaver. Uh, yeah, hello everybody. Uh, it's good to meet everybody. I am a representative of the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, I'm a landscape designer, a resident of Oregon City for the past five years, and I'm um, uh, very proud to be a part of all of this. And uh, yeah, look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. And I do uh, like this temporary unmuting, Mayor Holiday. so thank you. Ray, could you go next? Uh, Ray Atkinson, he, him, pronouns. Uh, I'm serving for the active transportation bike ped uh, seat and uh, as part of that I uh, I've never owned a car so I take that perspective that I walk bike take transit all those modes of car driving so Morgan City thank you and anyone who's not speaking please uh, put yourself on mute next let's go to Ray Gordon you are on mute Ray, use your space bar. Ray, maybe we'll come back to you once the mute thing gets. Oh, I got it. I got it. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. All right. So I'm Ray Gordon. I've been uh, in uh, uh, Oregon City since uh, late 2005. I've been on a few committees and I am a former. Clackamas County Tourism Department person, and I'm a current uh, musician and marketing professional. And I'm glad to be uh, representing arts and culture. Thank you. Let's go to Richard Howell. Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm, uh, uh, I've been here for about six years. I'm a uh, former management consultant now retired but enjoying immensely the opportunity to work to serve on the leadership team with the Homeless Solutions Coalition of, of Clackamas County. Thank you. Let's go to Mike Mitchell. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Mitchell. I've served on several different city advisory committees over the years. Presently I'm chair of the Oregon City Planning Commission. Thank you. Alejandro. Hello. Um, sorry. sorry, I'm late. I was just figuring out into the Zoom meeting. You're okay. Um, just introduce yourself and yeah. tell us uh, a thing or two about yourself. 
Okay. Um, my name is Alejandro Ferreira. Um, I'm going to be a senior at Oregon City High School, and I've lived in Oregon City about eight years now. Great. Thank you. Let's go to Josh Carrillo. Hey, everybody. I am Josh. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm a housing developer for Northwest Housing Alternatives uh, and affordable housing developer. Thank you. Ariel? Chris? Hi, everyone. My name is Ariel. I am playing the role of advocate for people with mental health, uh, disabilities, or challenges. And I live in Oregon City for the past little over two years. Uh, moved here from Louisiana, and I currently work at a Village for One, which is a local nonprofit here in Oregon City. Um, and I'm an occupational therapist, so my role is in mental health. Thank you. Sean Dachtler. Hi, my name is Sean Datchler. I'm the representative from the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, and I've lived in Oregon City for 18 years. Thank you. Amber Stenson. We cannot try holding down your space bar, Amber. I'm on my phone and my computer because for some reason it's not working. But anyway, hello, um, my name is Amber Stenson. Most know me as Amber Ray. Um, I am the creator of Oregon City Kit Chat. Um, my name is different in um, Facebook land because I'm also a behavioral health professional and clients tend to find you. So, um, and want to chime in on your life. But anyway, um, so during the day, I find those living with severe and persistent mental illness um, safe and comfortable living arrangements, living. Thank you for having me. Oh, and I'm um, community member at large number two. Thank you. Uh, Chris Staggs. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a local architect and builder, and I also represent the planning. I'm one of the um, representatives from the Planning Commission. It's great to be here, and I'm, I'm excited about what we're, we're going to accomplish. Thank you. Um, Sage? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hi, uh, my name is Sage Cerulean. Uh, I live here in Oregon City in the Barclay Hills neighborhood. And um, I'm part of the project advisory team for housing assistance and um, the rental. Um, and I use pronouns they, them, and I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you here. Um, Kelsey, did you introduce yourself already? Yeah, I work with uh, Pete and Laura in the building division. Thank you. I thought so. I'm losing track. Uh, Victoria, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm Victoria Meinig. I'm the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm also a resident of Oregon City. Ron, Ron Hyde, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, hi, my name's Ron Hyde. Uh, by day, I'm an engineer at Precision Cast Parts, a lifelong resident of the Portland metropolitan area. I've been a resident here in Oregon City for uh, about eight and a half years, and I will be representing people with physical disabilities. All right, I lost my place, but I'm going to go to John. Um, Diasis, is that right, John? Yeah, thank you. My name is John Diasis with Benchmade Knives. Uh, our family business has been in Oregon City for just about 30 years, and it's been exciting to see the community grow over time. I'm grateful to be part of this team, and nice to meet y'all. Thank you. Heidi Blackwell. Hello, my name's Heidi. I'm a mother to two sons that attend school here in Oregon City. I'm also a teacher here in Oregon City and uh, most recently a graduate student as well. I'm also a veteran. I'm very excited to be part of the team. Thank you for having me. Congratulations and thank you for your service. Holly, could you go next? Hi, I'm Holly Beam. I'm a nurse, midwife nurse practitioner. I work with uh, Women's Healthcare Associates and catch babies over at Willamette Falls Hospital. I 
have worked here for eight years and finally moved here about not quite two years ago. Thank you. Um, Stasia. Hi, I'm Stacia Hernandez Naganim. Hello, my name is Stacia Hernandez. I have the privilege of being the Chief of Staff for the Confederated Tribes of Grand Run. Uh, we currently own the Blue Heron property, and in addition to that, I've served as the project lead on a number of our large-scale uh, projects, and we'll be representing the tribal community, uh, which I look forward to. So thank you for allowing me to participate. Thank you, and sorry for my mispronunciation. Um, Des, could you go next? Yeah, uh, I'm Des Valdez. I use they, them pronouns, um, and I'm the Youth Ministry Coordinator at uh, Prince of Life Lutheran Church. Um, so I'm the faith representative. Uh, I've lived, or I've worked in Oregon City for about two and a half years, and I've lived here for about a year. So I'm excited to be part of this. Thank you. Emma, could you go next, please? Um, hi, my name is Emma Lugo. Um, <clears throat> I live here in Oregon City. I'm just two houses up from the Dairy Queen. Um, so if you ever are in the neighborhood, stop by. We've got a great foreign porch. I'd love to chat with you. Um, I've lived in Oregon City for about 10 years, and um, I really love it here. I've served on a commission before with Mayor Holiday, and um, it's just, it's really nice to be, uh, be active again here in my community. Um, I'm the host of Trans Positive, which is a program on KBOO Community Radio. I'm also on the board of KBOO. So, um, Anyways, it's so great. This is a great representative of our city. Um, I'm so inspired by everyone that I'm seeing here and uh, I'm really excited about this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Davidson. Hi, I'm Lisa Davidson. I represent Clackamas Community College. I'm an executive director and dean at the college in the Connections with Business and Industry Division. And so, and uh, I also live in Oregon City, so I'm happy to be a part of this for not only the college, but also for my own community. Thank you. Jean. You're on mute. You might want to hold down your space bar. How's that? Okay. Perfect. Uh, the screen shows Jean, but that's actually the first name on our email. This is Bob LaSalle, and I represent the Transportation Advisory Committee. I am also the chair of the CIC, although Amy will be representing the CIC for us. I'm very happy to be part of this group. Thank you, Bob. And I'm sorry, I should have recognized you from the South End Concept Plan a few years back. Um, Kelly, could you go next? Hi, guys. My name's Kelly Upkeys. I have been raised here in Oregon City. I currently have two children in the school district. I'm a local realtor, and I'm here representing uh, the Downtown Oregon City Association. Thank you. Abe. Good evening, everybody. My name is Abe Moland. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a health and transportation impact planner with Clackamas County Public Health Division. Who, uh, that's who I'm representing here tonight. Thank you. Um, Amy. Hey, everybody. I'm Amy Wilhite. I am representing the Citizen Involvement Committee that Bob mentioned. I was recently, um, for a number of years, the chair of the Citizen Involvement Committee. have been back in Oregon City since 2003, so love the community. Very excited to be project. This is a long time in coming and very excited for this. Thank you very much. Uh, Don Ward. Don, are you there? Okay, let's go with Roseanne Johnson. Have you? Good evening, everyone. My name is Roseanne Johnson. I'm Assistant Director of Government Affairs for the Portland Metro Home Builders Association. Uh, we have over 800 members that build all types of housing from ADUs to missing middle to uh, single family, attached, detached, cottage clusters, you name it. So uh, really pleased to be here to um, work with you all on, on looking ahead towards what Oregon City's housing and land use needs are. Um, I spent the better half of my formative years uh, being raised in Oregon City, went to the old Jackson High School, graduated from there, um, 
and uh, my husband has coached for Oregon City High School, and uh, my, my folks still live in rural Oregon City, so really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see here. I think, um, did we figure out how to unmute Sherry? Steve, now you're muted. Uh, am I mu still muted? No, Sherry, we can hear you. At least I can hear you. Oh, yeah, you're good, Sherry. Oh, cool. Okay, uh, I'm Sherry French. I have lived in this area more years than I want to tell any of you. Um, I am here um, as the elderly aging in place advocate. I'm not sure what aging in place is because I haven't stopped yet. Um, I am currently the board president for Clackamas Riverwater along with CRWSC Vice President, Budget Committee Chairman. Somehow my retirement got really busy all of a sudden. And um, I am really listening to all of you. Um, I think this is a great representation of Oregon City. I grew up at Karis. I still remember being able to drive to Oregon City and it seemed like it took so long to get there. You know, it was a big city to me when I was growing up. Um, and I look forward to us being able to come together and uh, make this area better. So that's me. Great. Um, Don Ward. Okay. I'm going to move on. We had someone just join us and it uh, looks like it says, uh, I, I'm not going to pronounce it, but A-D-A-E-C-E. Could you introduce yourself, please? Okay. Um, are there any PAT members Alicia. that go right ahead, please? Go right ahead and introduce yourself. I think you said Adesha. Oh, okay. sorry. I was saying that I think that's how she pronounces it. Oh, sorry gotcha. About that. This I is can't great. tell who's, who's talking. <laughs> Too many tiles. Um, uh, did any PAT members not get a chance to introduce themselves? Pete, I haven't on... had a chance. Okay, on the phone. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Maria Cott. Um, I've lived in Oregon City for about seven years, and I'm happy to be part of this team. Thank you very much. Any other PAT members that didn't get to introduce themselves? Ward uh, seems to be having trouble with this uh, audio, but uh, Don is a builder and uh, African American uh, community member. Thanks, Pete. Um, I do want to, John, John Keyes, um, a member of the public is here. Do you want to just introduce yourself quickly? Yeah, I'm John Keyes. We bought a house here in the Caulfield neighborhood 20 years ago. Um, I'm part of the CIC. I'm chairperson for our neighborhood right now. And uh, I wish I would have gotten more involved earlier in the last 20 years and the last few. But uh, I'm very glad to be involved in everything. Heidi Blackwell introduced herself. Yes, I introduced myself. Yeah, I think that I think that's everybody. Well, thank you all. Um, Annie, so I think you can go ahead and put folks on mute. Um, in a moment, I'm going to hand it over to Pete uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, the comprehensive what is a comprehensive plan and vision and provide a project overview. Um, then I will walk through kind of your roles and responsibilities as PAT members, talk about the vision process and schedule, and uh, about, some, about our community engagement plan and some of the things that we're doing, uh, we, the strategies we've identified to reach out to the community. Uh, then we'll have a discussion about community engagement strategies. 
Um, and then finally, we'll go over uh, what we call community conversations and the role that you all will play in that uh, before Pete goes into announcements and um, adjourns the meeting. So again, thank you all. Uh, this is a wonderful group and I look forward, I'm sure we all look forward to working together um, <clears throat> and just uh, bear with us as we kind of figure this out together as we go along. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to Pete. Make sure to take yourself off mute, Pete. Next slide. Oh. Thanks, Steve. So uh, why is Oregon City doing a comprehensive plan update? Um, we've seen, the city's seen serious, uh, significant changes in its population since the current comprehensive plan was adopted in 2004. The current comprehensive plan does not adequately reflect the needs of all community members in Oregon City. Uh, not only has our population changed, but previous outreach measures have not reached those uh, that are not already connected to local government. Uh, so traditional outreach me methods that we've used, coupled with long and complicated documents written only in English, um, fail to engage a wider range of community members who really need to be heard. Um, a new approach is needed which ensures that all community members are given the opportunity to participate in a collective vision for the future that reflects our values and equitably supports all. By working together to create a document reflective of our entire community, we will encourage people to participate in future city decisions. A more supported community is a more resilient community. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, what is a comprehensive plan um, and what is a vision and why are we doing this? The comprehensive plan is a planning document that directs all activities related to land use and the future of natural and man-made systems and services in Oregon City. The plan helps manage expected population and employment growth through a set of goals and policies and implementation measures that align with the community's vision. All Oregon cities and counties are required to maintain and update their comprehensive plan. That, and that has to be consistent with 19 statewide planning goals. These goals set broad statewide policies for land use planning, citizen involvement, housing supply, economic development, transportation, recreation, and more. Under state law, all area and community plans, zoning codes, permits, and public improvements must be consistent with the comprehensive plan, which is in turn consistent with the state's policy goals. City leaders use comprehensive plan to coordinate public investments and to make decisions about new development um, and how it affects how new development affects existing neighborhoods and the transportation system and other topics. Cities routinely amend their comprehensive plans incrementally to respond to changing conditions and whenever the city must incorporate new policy. Oregon City's last full update was in 2004 and this project is the first complete comprehensive plan update since that time. And what is a vision? The vision is a statement of what community members want Oregon City to be in 2040. The vision statement expresses your values and aspirations of community members and guides the development of the goals and policies. Oregon was one of the first places in the United States uh, to pioneer the use of community-based visioning. And we are a state that's recognized for innovative local land use planning and growth management. But visioning is a very important precursor to that and a tool to help us better manage complex change. A comprehensive approach to visioning can be framed by asking the questions in your visioning survey and in the community conversation sit, uh, kit, which we will explain momentarily. In addition to the vision process, we conduct an analysis of the 2004 plan. What did we accomplish and what didn't we get done? We also review existing city documents gather the most 
up-to-date data to help make informed decisions. How do we know where we want to be in 2040? This is where public input is so important. Community engagement drives the vision, which in turn guides the development of goals and policies. And then all of this information will be used to update the comprehensive plan. Now this comprehensive plan, we do have a comprehensive plan map, which is adopted, but it will not be adopted as part of this process. This process is focusing primarily on the vision, the goals and the policies and the text of the comprehensive plan itself. Now I'm going to describe the overall project schedule, including a description of the main tasks. The first task is the kickoff and background, which began in March. We held initial meetings with the Planning Commission, City Commission, Citizen Involvement Committee, and Natural Resources Committee. And we started the background analysis of the uh, plan and existing documents. Uh, we started our website and we developed the draft public engagement plan, which was reviewed by those groups. And then we began to recruit members for the project advisory team. In task two, which is community ed education and engagement, we begin the public outreach process outlined in that community engagement plan. Task three is devoted to the development of the community vision and involves five more project advisory team meetings in this phase with work sessions with planning commission and city commission prior to adoption of the vision statement in late 2020. In task four, we switch gears and we begin to draft the comprehensive plan. The general, inf the general format of the plan will include the community vision followed by four or five chapters such as strong community culture and heritage, a thriving and diverse economy, healthy ecosystem, coordinated and resilient infrastructure, and equitable and diverse housing. So each of these chapters would be developed at a separate series of summits or workshops guided by the direction provided in the community vision. And each of those summits will be uh, open to the public so that they can be interactive and we'll get input on that. Once each chapter is drafted, the comprehensive plan will be assembled and further refined by the project advisory team before being reviewed at joint work sessions of the Planning Commission and City Commission and the Citizen Involvement Committee. Um, following a final review and recommendation from the project advisory team, there will be joint work sessions with the City Commission and Planning Commission before our final draft is ready for adoption. And then the final stage is the legislative review part of the process where the draft comprehensive plan is reviewed through a series of public hearings uh, before the Planning Commission and City Commission and then adopted by ordinance. Um, I just want to mention the funding sources for this plan comes from two state agencies, Oregon Department of Transportation, Transportation and Growth Management Fund, and the Department of Land Conservation and Development Technical Assistance Grant, along with funds from the city itself. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pete. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you all have signed up for. Um, so our project advisory team um, is going to meet approximately nine times over the next uh, 12 months or so. Um, we ask that you come ready to engage in discussions with your neighbors um, and review the materials that we send out in advance. We will be asking for your comments on draft work products um, and we'll ask that you do a, a, a several things here. Um, help guide our community engagement efforts, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, act as liaisons to your constituencies and the interest groups and the groups that you're a, a member of um, to help get more people involved. Um, when we do have larger public events, um, help us host those events and, and welcome and encourage participation from your friends and neighbors. Um, provide recommendations on key project issues and decisions. And then finally, um, if we all do our, our jobs right and we're um, proud 
of our resulting comprehensive plan and vision that you all act as champions um, for those um, in terms of um, in the community and with planning commission and um, city commission. Okay. Our vision process and schedule. So Pete kind of shared with you the overall um, schedule. Uh, but right now our focus is really um, on developing the vision and really doing, uh, conducting community engagement uh, in order to build that vision statement this fall. So um, our initial outreach efforts began in May and will extend through September and possibly into October. Uh, you were sent the draft community engagement plan, which provides details on our proposed engagement and communications tools. And they include uh, meetings with the Citizen Involvement Committee, and we're thankful to have several uh, members of that committee um, as part of our uh, PAT. Uh, community conversations, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the meeting after our group discussion. So stay tuned for that. Um, online surveys, including the current survey, which went live in June and offers our community visioning questions in English and Spanish. We're um, soon gonna be putting up interactive display boards in several public spaces in the, around the city to allow people to share their thoughts on certain um, discrete questions. And you know it's hard um, to use those for deep engagement, but um, it does allow, they will allow people to provide some um, thoughts and really serve as a, another mechanism to help build awareness for this project. Uh, we're also going to be launching a photo contest soon, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, we hope to work with uh, the school district this fall um, to develop an activity specifically um, uh, targeted for youth and in to encourage the participation of the youth in our community. And then we had planned to have a presence at uh, community events throughout the summer. Obviously, uh, community events are not happening this summer. Uh, but we will continue to try to find different ways um, to use our time and our resources um, to reach out to um, members of the Oregon City community. In terms of communication tools, so we have uh, a logo and branding for the project so that community members recognize that our communications and documents are all kind of part of this effort. And I want to say, and Pete, maybe you could unmute yourself for a second to talk about the development of our project logo. Can you do that, Pete? Okay, there you go. Sorry. Thanks, Steve. The project logo with the heart was developed through a design competition uh, of Rocky Smith, our city commissioners, uh, Oregon City High School graphic design class. And uh, this was the winning entry by, uh, by one of the students. Um, and it's a very, we did get about 50 entries for the uh, logo. And this was the one that we felt best represented the uh, project aspirations. Um, and Thanks, there, Pete. You bet. Yeah, thanks. So love the logo and excited to build our uh, branding around that. Um, we've developed key messages which are listed in the community engagement plan and we'll be using those um, throughout the process. They might be modified over time, but we like to have consistent messaging. Um, there's a project website where people can go to learn more about the project and get all the latest updates. And really all of our or many of our, um, our engagement efforts and our communication efforts really encourage people to visit the website and, and use that as the hub of information for this project. And then you'll see throughout the process, social media, mailed notices, media releases, email blasts, um, and other ways that we'll be getting the word out to, to you and the community. So um, the key questions that we're, we ask in our uh, community vision, there's really two basic questions. And, you know, there's different ways to ask these questions, um, but essentially they are, first, what makes Oregon City special today? Um, we often ask, what do you love about Oregon City? Um, and what are those aspects of the city that we wanna strive to preserve? So that's the first question that we ask. 
And then the second is, what about Oregon City would you like to change in the future? Uh, what can improve? So like I said, we might ask those questions in different variations, but those are the two core community vision questions that we're asking. And you'll see that throughout our outreach materials. So uh, I mentioned that the community survey went live in June. And as of last night, uh, 563 people had taken the survey. So that's a, a great start to our outreach efforts. However, we do know that there are many barriers to participation via online and virtual, you know, virtual forums like this and to taking online surveys. And I just wanna walk through some of that information a little bit. Um, this, this information was um, self-selected. People didn't have to provide it, but it gives you just a glimpse. Um, you can see that through this online survey, we're not really reaching our youth or young adults. Um, or our seniors 80 years and older. Um, so that's one group that um, we need to think about how we can reach better. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, let me just get my notes up. Um, you can also see here that we are not reaching our communities of color in Oregon City to the degree that we would like to. And um, from this chart here, you can see that we are not uh, reaching our lower income households in the community. So um, we certainly were aware that uh, an online survey would not um, reach all of the uh, demographics of our community and all the different populations that make up Oregon City. Um, so in a moment, what we wanna do is have a discussion about how we can better reach these underrepresented uh, underrepresented communities. We did, you know, have these conversations as um, city staff and consultant team about strategies that we might use to help in this effort, um, but we did want to discuss them with you. But some of the things that we talked about are partnerships with agencies and organizations that serve these different communities. Um, definitely, we already have started to translate materials at least into Spanish. Uh, but looking at further translations, if that um, appears to be a, a significant barrier. Um, potentially delivering hard copies of surveys and flyers and other materials to specific sites, uh, maybe uh, multifamily residences or retirement homes. And then uh, potentially using gift cards to local businesses as another way to encourage uh, participation from groups that are underrepresented. So now we look forward to hearing about your ideas about strategies we can use to reach these communities uh, and these people that the survey and our other uh, mechanisms are not reaching right now. Um, in a moment, you'll be moved to a breakout room um, so we can try to have some more manageable discussions about what strategies we could pursue. And then we'll come back together and our facilitators will report back on your ideas. Um, I want to encourage people to um, get to know the people in your breakout session room. Um, if you wanna share what you love about Oregon City, um, that would be great. We're gonna be recording the breakout sessions as well. Um, we're gonna take about uh, 20 minutes or so for discussion. Um, but before we do that, uh, we thought it would be good to give everyone about a five minute break. So it's about 6.49 according to my clock right now. Um, we will start the breakout sessions at 6.55. Um, so please do whatever you need to do. Take a little break and uh, get ready for the breakout sessions at 6.55. Thank you very much.
Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you got a chance to stretch out a little bit. I know that these uh, Zoom meetings can be a little tiresome. Um, so just um, so everyone knows what's going to happen now, most of you um, are going to be directed to a breakout room, although about a quarter of you are going to stay and have your conversation in the room that we're in right now. Um, we, so we have four rooms total, and the facilitators are Anise Maté, Pete Walter, Laura Turway, and myself. And um, yeah, I think with that, um, let's go ahead, Anise, and move into our breakout rooms and have a discussion about community engagement. Um, great. So this is kind of the, the breakout room in the main session area. Um, I'm just going to help facilitate a little bit of a discussion here. I know the breakout rooms are running for about 20 minutes, um, so we have plenty of time to chat. Um, you are all welcome to take yourself off of mute. We're a much more manageable group here, uh, still at 14, but not too bad. Um, in any case, yeah, so really the, the question that we are posing, and I'm here to, I'm happy to take some notes and kind of help us along here, um, but it's talking about the community engagement strategies and what kind of things we might want to consider um, as we try and engage a broader, um, broader spectrum of folks in the Oregon City community. Um, you saw from Steve's PowerPoint uh, and some notes on our survey that we you know there's certain um, aspects or, or um, communities that we're not reaching, um, lower income folks, uh, younger folks. Um, so I'm happy to just kind of take some notes on from your experience, what are some great ways to get the word out about the comp plan and the visioning work, and then all of the different opportunities that we're gonna have to get involved. Um, and also, if anybody has any questions at any point, I'm happy to field what I can. And I'd be happy to start. <laughs> yeah, sure. That sounds um, great. I'm going to take notes. Okay, great. Uh, one group I would recommend we reach out to is the Coalition of Communities of Color. Great. Do you have a contact for them in, in particular or? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't have one off the top of my head, but I can, look, yeah, I can buy one. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just my two cents. Um, in looking at the gift card promotion, yeah, uh, I have a problem with offering it automatically to certain demographics, but not to others. I mean, I understand the goal, but I that feels more like bribery than incentive, and I think that really. Um, I just don't think that's a very good program, yeah. you know, but that's just my opinion. No, no, that's, that's fair. Well, this is Roseanne with HBA. I think a compromise there could be um, to still utilize the gift cards, but maybe make it like a drawing or a raffle, not a raffle, sorry, a drawing type system, you know, um, make it more of an incentive that way where you're inviting some, you know, people to participate and anyone could win this uh, gift card. Yeah, great idea. I would assume those are gift cards for local businesses. I'm sorry, say that again? I would assume the, the gift cards are for local businesses. We would want to promote Oregon City businesses with those gift cards for sure. Yeah, there was definitely an, an emphasis on promoting um, local businesses. Um, but then there was also someone had made a comment about uh, having gift cards available for grocery stores like Fred Meyer um, and places like that. So not hyper local, um, but still places that people are spending money at. 
Um, a grocery a outlet is a good community-based grocery store where yeah. Fred Meyers is a bigger chain, but grocery outlet I think is a franchise and they do a lot of community engagement. Great. Um, so I have a question. I'm wondering if you want to get community buy-in, it's important to help members of the community understand what it is that they're buying into. Um, I mean, I've served on city commission, so I kind of understand the process, but when we're reaching out to people in terms of creating our vision, like it's important to think about what are we asking people to sign on to? Um, you know, like I, for instance, as an LGBTQ representative, would love to see Oregon City have an LGBTQ pride parade or a pride mm -hmm. festival, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen in Oregon City, not even by 2040. So, you know, when we're thinking about what we want our community to buy into, we have to ask ourselves, what are we asking them to do? Because I'm not really clear about that. Sure, never yeah. say never. <laughs> um, absolutely. Well, you know, the, the most basic question um, that is really framing the visioning process is about what do you want to see in Oregon City in 2040? Um, super open-ended and is really meant to start, like, making the gears work around visioning your future um, and you know having that kind of question at least uh allow the conversation of an lgbtq uh, parade happening in you know in, in the future things like that so um the maybe maybe to answer your question a little bit more directly the buy-in at this point is really sharing your vision um sharing your thoughts and ideas for what what the future of your community you want it to look like will that will that be respected though when you're asking people who belong to marginalized groups to get involved in something they have to feel like they're going to be respected and if yeah. they're not then they're not going to participate i think have any strategies or things that we should think of um, as we we build that capacity and that ability I think that, um, you know, the idea of incentive is a fun one, but I really like appreciate that when you're looking at connecting with marginalized populations or that really small percentage of people of color here in Oregon City. Um, I know for me in general, it's a mistrust of what are you actually collecting my information for? Yeah. And what are you gonna do with it? And I think especially for black communities, um, for people from Mexico, that is a big issue too. And I think that, you know, it's so much deeper than inviting people to fill out a survey or trying to create an incentive, but it's building trust within the community. And I think that creating a more personal approach or like, like this group having people in the community who are going out into the community asking people that they know inviting them into the circle i think that that's a big part of creating that trust too absolutely and a really um big piece of this engagement work i think on the sign-in sheet i was just looking at like when we hold um the little conversation groups that making sure people don't feel forced to leave their email address but also have it if they're comfortable have the columns checked of you know what you know what you the things you're looking for the color income you know all of the to pick out what groups you're hitting if people are comfortable none of it's forced and that's something that i know at our neighborhood meetings we really try to emphasize is that we're not gathering information that you're not comfortable giving and that's so are you, perfectly are you, saying, are you saying adding demographic questions on the sign-in sheet yeah just a little checkbox you know just and not making the email address seem so i mean it's prominent it's like this huge area and it makes people sometimes feel they have to and if they don't want to be contacted they just want to give their information you know their input then if we make that not quite so huge and then verbally reinforce that bit. Yeah, I think the title of the blog says, um, please provide your email address if you would like to sign up for project updates. Is that is that not what it says? No, it just it just asks, it's got your name, email address, and then there's a box they can check to add to the mailing list. But some people, you know, when we're talking about they don't trust, we have, you know, some people just don't want to give you their email address, even though 
they they have the option not to be on the list they don't trust that that's really going to happen that's great thanks amy i think uh what i would like to offer is that from my point of view uh these small populations that really need to be uh embraced engaged brought into the in, have their voices really be brought into view those those people are not going to be found uh, and they're not going to find a way to express their voices through conventional channels uh, trying to get them to go onto a website and click a button to to do a survey isn't going to get those people it seems to me the only way to get the, the, the broader community, the diversity of the community would be to have a champion who's responsible for each of these areas of, of, uh, of marginalized uh, people. I like that. For that champions, champion's job would be not to go and tell people, I'm working on a 2040 plan. That would put them to sleep immediately. The only way to get them interested, I think, would be to ask them, I think there's two questions. One of them is, what do you really love about Oregon City right now? So that would help us to know what we need to build on, repeat, enlarge, expand. And if the second question was, so what's missing in Oregon City? That if, if it was, if, if we had that, it would really help us. What, what, what would that be? And I, they would tell us, you know, they tell us what's really on their heart, what's really you know, troubling them, what's really missing. Maybe for them it's transportation or it's who knows what it is. Um, but we need to find out. And then I like that verbiage. Up. Yeah. What's missing versus yeah. what would you do to improve? That it sends yeah, a different message. Like what's missing, because people mm -hmm. people will do this. They will tell us, they will tell us exactly what for them personally is missing. And then we could say the third question might be, who else should I talk to who knows a lot about the experience in in your community whatever the community is like that and that would give that champion or that that subgroup the ability to go chasing after those voices those people that need to be heard so if we were really wanting to be aggressive about it you know if, if i was working with uh i'm an older guy let's say i was working with people over 80. well okay i'm going to try to go figure out where do the people who are over 80 where do they live uh, how, how do I find them? How do I listen to them? If I was their, that champion, I'd be trying to, to look at that particular population. If I was looking for veterans, because we don't have veterans, there's a lot of ways that you could you could uh, tap that that uh, that community. But I think it's that, that, that it's not to ask these general questions like fill a survey out. It's more to ask personal questions like what do you like? What's missing? Who else should I talk to? That's great feedback, Richard. Um, and the survey is certainly not the only um, avenue for getting that information. Um, we, I don't think we've gone over the community conversations kit um, that's been pulled together, um, but it has some of that language, though I do appreciate your edits to some of the verbiage there, that's great. Um, but it really tries to get at the heart of those conversations and they're, and they're to be used um, by folks that are champions of their own communities and then also are, are there to collect even more information about who to talk to next. Um, but I do really appreciate uh, that context um, and I've taken that those notes down. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, this is Roseanne with HVA again. What about the question of why did you move here or or what um, what circumstances led to you living in Oregon City? Yeah, um, because, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, representing, I guess, the housing and land use uh, industry from a market rate perspective, a lot of people move places because they're going for a job or they really like the area. But like the first the first, you know, ch checkbox that usually has to be checked is a job or somebody's job in the family. Um, so, you know, asking questions like, you know, was it a, was it a family job? Was it? you know, you needed to come back and help out your family, um, you know, that, and I think that will open the door to like life, talking about life and what happens in Oregon City and what, what they like and don't like about it. So, um, yeah, so just going back to the initial question. That's great. What, cir Rosanna. what circumstances brought you here? Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you there's going to be other people that move to Oregon City in the future and those people are like who we are now, who, who you all are now, right? 
and you are here now, but there's going to be other people who are going to call Oregon City home. And so um, what did, what attracted you and what brought you? Yeah, you guys are all nailing it on the head. Um, and I wish that we had maybe gone over the community conversations kit first, um, because all of that information and all the different ways in which we can ask those questions and kind of bring about a story um, is all included in the community conversations kit. So the questions that you saw in Steve's slides were really just the tip of the iceberg. Um, but any good visioning conversation always starts with a story of why why here, why now, or why then. Um, so yeah, you guys are, are totally hitting the nail on the head here. Um, I do want to direct the uh, our conversation a little bit more towards strategies for engaging folks. Um, and a little bit less on the content just at this point in time. Um, so if I can just continue calling some ideas from you guys about um, strategies for reaching maybe the communities that you're involved in um, and what, you know, how, how, to, how best to do that. Um, we've, we've heard already some ideas on obviously reaching the champions of these different communities and groups and clubs and organizations. Um, are there other ideas that you have in, in terms of sharing information and um, having these types of visioning conversations that we're going to be doing through the through the community conversations um, activity and then of course the online survey and all the other things that are happening. So, One of the things that I would love to see and I'd like to know if this if the Oregon City 2040 group is serious about it, but I would like to see Oregon City become a city that's welcoming for black and brown people. Um, I think it's really clear that for most black and brown folks, they really, you talk about what makes you move to Oregon City and why do you feel welcome here? And I consistently hear from black and brown people that they don't want to move here because it's not a welcoming place for black and brown people. And I would really like the Oregon City Commission Group to make this a place by 2040 where that conversation is not happening anymore. You know, where like, and, and one of the things that this group has done really well that I really appreciate is on the Oregon City website now they're doing like this day in black history or something like that. Like, and it's, it's, it's one little thing, but you know, I mean, we, we have to have that conversation and it's really important because right now I feel like that would be a great, if we could just do that little thing, it would be a great small step toward making Oregon City a better place. Great, thank you, yeah. Just some of the things my family's done this week is we go get lunches at the, the Oregon City schools are serving lunches at the parks. Oh yeah. In different places and so that's something that families are, are, yeah. are going to and there could be information there available or a board at those locations and then we also go to the library to pick up things yeah that's great these are awesome ideas okay i wonder about um after school clubs too like i know a bunch of the youth i work with are like heavily involved in boy scouts um okay. and so that might be a good avenue for that okay cool um are these after school clubs in what capacity are they meeting right now um, I know my students at least are still like kind of meeting like outdoors, like separate. Great. Oh, Des, you may have, um, you're frozen. Still have activities going on with youth that are going there. I know a couple of my nephews love to go there. Sorry, Amy, can you repeat that? My internet was a little unstable and I, I just didn't catch the first part. There's the gaming store in the, oh, but it used to be Southridge, there by Wild Hair and by Mart. Perfect. There's a family gaming okay. center, yeah. Awesome, thanks for that idea. PTA, yeah, and a lot of the PTAs are coming back together now that school's starting again. So that would be going through the school district again or contacting the schools. Yeah, these are excellent avenues. We're just Wait. trying to get, sorry. Alex? Oh, it's okay. Yeah, um, I am 17, so I'm still in school. And I know that a lot of the times the school um, student councils, mm -hmm. the student council members, they try to get involved with the students. Um, I know that at the middle school level, there is a student council. And since the youth is something that is hard to hit, I think going through them and working with them can definitely help too. 
That's a great, that's great feedback, Alex. Um, something that we're definitely going to hope to have happen is hosting these community conversations, maybe with um, a, a U.S. A, AP government class, or maybe there's um, a particular class or course at the high school that would be really amenable to having a community conversation, um, maybe a civic uh, civics course. I'm not sure exactly what the name of all of your classes are, but I'm sure there's a lot. Um, yeah, that's excellent. I like those ideas. I know the school district sends out an email blast. It'd be interesting if they would let us put something. That's a great idea. Um, that's run by Lisa Norman. She's the communications person for the district. Okay. You know, as, as I listen, I'm, I'm, I'm struck by the unique nature of each of the parts of the population, youth versus aging versus homeless versus black, brown. Yeah. I don't mean, sorry, Richard, I don't mean to interrupt. Our room is going to end in five seconds, but people are coming back in. So you can keep talking, um, but folks are going to start coming back in. I don't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just saw the timer on my screen. Oh, okay. Well, in brief, I'm thinking that each, so yes, it's great to have a template for a conversation, but I think they're going to have to be tailored for the uniqueness of each of these groups so that the right questions are asked and explored. Great feedback, thank you. Um, it looks like all breakout rooms are gonna close in about 30 seconds. So we should see folks trickling in here soon. If anybody has any more thoughts or ideas, I'm happy to continue jotting them down. A billboard or a banner or something even just around that? Yeah, we're planning on that. <laughs> but I like that, thank you. It's a very cool like logo. It yeah, it's a cool story too, isn't it? Um, so this is Roseanne HBA again, akin to Emma's point about uh, talking with brown and black skinned folks um, and them saying that they don't actually want to move to Oregon City. Is, is there a sort of industry standard when we're doing a comprehensive plan look like this at, at asking people outside of the community? Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a plethora of organizations, whether they be equity-based or, you know, um, coalition of color-based that are outside Oregon City, um, perhaps asking them their view on Oregon City or, you know, what they like about it, if, if they know about it, right? I mean, I know it's getting into a little bit different um, group there, but if you're trying to really find out what would prevent someone from moving to Oregon City and, and what those issues are, that might be um, an avenue to, to at least consider. Yeah, excellent. Housing and jobs are the two Wait. big ones. Yeah. Um, so it looks like we're done with our breakout rooms here. Everybody is back. Um, Steve, I'm just going to go ahead and, and mute myself and have everybody else mute themselves, and then um, you can take it away. Thanks, Anis. And don't go too far, because I'm going to be calling on you to give a recap of what you heard in your uh, breakout group. So I think I'll start with Pete Walter. Pete, you want to just share some of the ideas that your group talked about? Yeah, we really needed more time, <laughs> but All right. yeah, it was great. Um, okay, so bearing in mind restrictions of COVID, there is a desire to try to maximize personal face-to-face -face interaction because that's how people respond a lot of times. Um, uh, with respect to seniors, the idea was that we could target some of the golf courses like Stone Creek and Oregon City Golf Course, and there's also youth golf programs. Um, Pioneer Center has a pretty robust email list we should tap into, and there are a number of organizations that have email lists that we can tap into. Um, Farmers Market um, has a pretty good setup right now as far as social distancing goes that we could participate in with booths. Um, in terms of uh, 
translation of materials, um, Sage brought up that it's pretty important if we're going to be targeting apartment complexes, those need to be translated materials as well. Um, so Spanish and Russian uh, and possibly others to the extent that we can. Um, Oregon City's utility bills are always a good way for us to get uh, feedback. Um, the trail news, the quarterly trail news that the city put out. Um, the library website has a has a good uh, reader readership that we can tap into. Uh, for seniors, um, probably want to concentrate more on direct mailing, uh, hard copies, um, and also targeting, this is great, assisted sen and senior living facilities, which we have a list of in Oregon City. Um, and uh, self-addressed stamped envelopes for so that people can uh, just if they're going to do a questionnaire, just drop it off at that location and then drop it in the mail. Uh, Mike mentioned that the VFW has 400 members, for example, that they can pick up something like that at the VFW and drop it off right there. Um, Oregon City Chit Chat, uh, important to focus on the community aspects of this project and not let it become something political uh, because we are such a large and diverse group and we're all here really to build community and try to focus on that as much as possible. Um, was a comment that filling out essays and checking off boxes and squares is a little daunting for some people. So, um, you know, we need to try to keep it um, more interactive. Um, Farmer's Market, Willamette Falls TV can make announcements. Um, I'm not sure what kind of um, contract the city currently has with them. I think we do have one, that, but they are, they've been really great to work with in the past. Uh, Facebook Live um, can reach more people. So we could work with Kristen Brown, our communications coordinator through that potentially. Uh, and someone mentioned having watch parties on Facebook Live. Um, also, uh, the elevator is a great location. So anybody who walks into the elevator, they can say, hey, we heard about the comprehensive plan. Here's some information. It's kind of a captive audience in there. <laughs> um, community Zoom meetings. I think we're going to talk more about that with community conversations. Uh, local TV stations like KOAN and K2 and the Oregonian. Um, Community boards at grocery stores. Uh, let's see. Barron's Farmers Warehouse. Hey. Oh, the idea of having a tear off sheet with a QR code on it so that somebody could either get a gift card or enter a drawing for a gift card if they fill out a questionnaire or go and participate somehow. Um, Oregon City School District has online learning portal right now. We could potentially tap into that. Um, and they have an email blast or through, you know, a, a, a very large email list for Oregon City School District. Um, and I think that was about everything I got. A um, few other great ideas, but that's the majority of it. Thank you. That's a lot, Pete. Thank you. And thank you to that group. Um, <clears throat> Laura, maybe you could go next and maybe primarily identify ideas that your group had that maybe Pete didn't already mention. Um, reaching people where they're at, where they get news. So um, Twitter and TikTok uh, was on there. So there's a lot of stuff. I'm just going to identify a few. Um, coffee shops, Pete said grocery stores. Um, there was interesting ideas about partnering with restaurants. So maybe on their to-go boxes and takeaway stuff, they can hand something out with that. Um, and doing coloring contests, you know, where they put them up at the grocery store so you see them there too, or at restaurants um, if, when we pair up with those. Um, talking to uh, boat ramps right now, they're very active in the community and parks, so maybe reaching out to people there. Um, communicating with youth sports, so Oregon City Youth Sports is having activities at the moment, so if we could get in touch with the coaches, that would maybe help us get more feedback from um, the younger generation. 
thrift stores, Office of Unemployment, Food Pantry, the college and the school district, neighborhood associations, doctor's office. People tend to still be going to the doctor's office right now. And then um, churches. And to end it, uh, a suggestion to, when we're at the farmer's market with the booth, have a handout. And uh, a good suggestion for a handout was hand sanitizer. Mm. And that's it. Sorry. Unmuting is difficult sometimes. Thank you. I love the hand sanitizer idea. Let's do it. <clears throat> um, Anna East, could you talk about some ideas that came out of your group discussion, please? Yeah, we had, as you can imagine, a slew of really great ideas. Um, my group was uh, hot on the heels of our, the next topic of conversation will be our community conversations kit. So I'm excited uh, for everyone to hear about that. Um, but we talked about some of uh, some additional spots um, to reach folks would be uh, their school lunches happening out at the park right now. Um, the library is a really uh, kind of central place to get to. Um, after school clubs like the Boy Scouts, they're still meeting right now. Um, PTAs, student council, uh, the school district definitely sends out uh, a blast. Um, and the gaming store um, is another idea of places to be and, and places to go. Um, and then we also just had a couple of ideas around the kinds of questions we want to ask and then some thoughts about uh, the types of gift cards and how we're incentivizing that as well. Um, these are all notes that I'm happy to share um, as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that report. Um, some ideas that came out of the group that I was with, we started by talking about just grocery outlet and that they, uh, there's been food drives there and um, maybe have a station there to engage people verbally or have um, some boards there to engage people, um, thinking about being there um, on paydays or the day after paydays to make sure we're engaging um, a lot of folks there. Um, I think the transit center was another uh, location where we can engage a lot of people and some of the uh, demographics we're not reaching that we talked about. Um, uh, <clears throat> one of our members noted that Clackamas County is just starting a partnership with uh, coalitions for communities of color and uh, you know maybe there's some way um, to engage them um, or ask you know um, for advice or you know tailor efforts however we might work with them. Um, let's see here. And, you know, one, one point that was raised that I just want to touch on, we, we do know that this is a stressful time for many people, um, you know, financially, um, um, in terms of health and things like that. So no matter what we do, we will, we will be committed to being, you know, thoughtful and respectful and um, understanding that, you know, some, you know, people might not be in a great space to um, be thinking about the future right now. Um, but to that end, uh, some of our members, our, our group said, you know, try to help people see themselves in this process. So, um, you know, um, what's your vision for yourself as part of Oregon City? Um, uh, we mentioned there's some uh, photos on the website, and I know we're just getting that gallery going, but making sure that we're showing a, a great diversity of um, the people and the places in Oregon City, uh, make sure we have uh, diversity there. Um, Oregon City Trail News, Oregon City News, um, like people said, partnering with community organizations and helping, you know, uh, having them help us reach their membership. Uh, Parks and Rec, um, me the Meals on Wheels program, um, and maybe even I was thinking, yeah, uh, we talked about um, phone calls are being made through Meals on Wheels and, you know, why not conduct some of these uh, surveys th just over the phone? They're not very complicated questions, so why can't we do that over the phone? Um, and then Parks and Rec, of course, is a, a way to engage youth and thinking about what activity or um, you know, how we, we can activate the youth. What, how can we get them interested and engaged? Um, I, think, I think that's a lot of you know, uh, what we talked about. And, and again, we echo a lot of what we heard in the other groups. I just so, add, go ahead, go ahead, Steve. Steve. 
I, I just thought of Gleaners, which is our food distribution center on First Street. Um, talk to the uh, folks that run that. Great. All right. Well, that's a lot of great ideas. Um, thank you all for, for helping us um, expand our ideas and our strategies on how we can engage different segments of the, of the community. <clears throat> so I just want to cover um, one of our tools that's been posted to the website is these community conversation kits and they're posted in English and Spanish. Um, the idea is we take some of those same basic simple questions that are in the survey and we use people like you and me and Laura and Pete and Annie East um, to reach out to our neighbors, our friends and the groups that we're involved with. Um, you know, people mentioned a lot of different uh, partnering with these different organizations in the community. Well, to the extent that you're part of a, a place of worship or a PTA or a business organization, um, you know, if we get everyone on this PAT to do two um, conversations, which is what we're hoping for, that's 70 conversations, you know, with people throughout the community. And I think that that would be a really incredible reach, especially considering what a diverse group we have as part of our PAT. Um, so uh, I believe Pete sent you the kit um, by email. Um, we do ask that by mid-September, you try to facilitate two conversations. Now this could be in person um, with family or people who are in your, your, on your quarantine or in your quarantine pod, um, you know, or um, I know as many of us have been doing, having socially distanced outdoor um, activities and conversations with friends and neighbors. Um, or you can go ahead and conduct a virtual meeting um, like, like we're doing here. Another thing that we'll be doing is trying to get on um, the agendas of groups that are continuing to meet, whether that's a group like the Chamber of Commerce or other groups. Um, so, um, sorry, I just want to make sure, okay, I'm getting some chats and I wanna make sure I, I see those. And now I need to go back. Um, so oh, yeah, ver sorry, Pete, go ahead. Sorry, Sage just added that we should add the living room as a way to reach LGBTQ youth. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, so um, yes, and then conducting a virtual meeting is a, another way to do that. Um, we tried the kit, I believe, we believe has everything you need to, to host and lead this, uh, these types of conversations. It gives you a guide. Um, it gives you tips on leading a discussion. Um, it, show, it gives you the questions and a place to take notes and a sign-in sheet. Uh, so if you want to take notes you know, on paper and scan them and send them to Pete, that's one way to do it. We also have this set up so you could just enter, you know, pull up the online survey and enter the, you know, the answers from your conversations right into the online survey, and then you can be done with that. Um, so um, in the coming uh, days or week or so, we will be reaching out to you all and asking you to um, identify a group or two that you'd be willing to meet with, and that way we can um, track all those conversations. Uh, but we really appreciate your help in reaching out to the community. Um, I think that's what I have on the community conversations. I know we're getting some chat in here. Um, the only thing I would add, Steve, is I'm going to upload a video uh, walking people through the community conversations kit um, to the website on, uh, by Friday. Okay. And thank you for your comments and chat. We will be able to um, grab the, the chat function when we're done with the meeting and take any additional ideas that weren't spoken um, from that chat function. So thank you for that. And with that, I think I'd like to hang it over, hand it over, back over to Pete to talk a little bit about uh, next steps and meeting logistics going forward. All right. I saw in the chat, we had a question from uh, Chris saying, how should we document informal conversations? Um, so that's something we should get back to the group on. But uh, thanks well, Pete, to everybody. Pete, Pete yeah. I, I can feel that. I mean, I would do it the same way we, I mean, that's what the community conversation kit is for. Um, you know, either enter it into, you know, enter a new survey and just put, uh, you know, instead of name or whatever, just put um, conversation with neighbor or something like that. Um, or t just type it up and email it to Pete and he'll make sure that it becomes part of the record. Yeah, good. Thanks, thanks for feeling that one. Um, so thank you for every, 
to everybody for these great ideas. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns about this meeting, um, please be sure to email me. Um, I'm going to send out a doodle poll um, so that we can determine that the best days and times for future PAT meetings. Um, and that will be most beneficial to the PAT. Uh, and please be sure to review the PAT charter that we sent out. Um, that document describes the purpose, the composition, and the role of the PAT, um, and also our decision-making process, and um, the ground rules for meeting conduct. Um, and just wanna let you know, if you are contacted by the media, um, please direct them to me. But if you are interviewed, um, please clearly represent that your statements are yours alone and not those of the PAT itself uh, as a group. Um, the time frame for the plan is approximately 16 months. Uh, nine more meetings of the project advisory team over the next 12 months. And as you mentioned, the uh, vision would be adopted by the end of this year. And then the comprehensive plan itself would be hopefully adopted by the end of 2021. Um, and we will be uploading the video of this meeting to the project website, and it'll be also available on the city's YouTube channel. Um, and that's all I have, so thank you to everybody. Pete, yeah. there was a question about, um, so you're, you're gonna do a doodle poll in, in terms of meeting logistics. How often will, can this group expect to meet? As a group, yeah, we will have uh, nine more meetings. So approximately monthly, maybe every. Approx I would say approximately monthly. Yes, um, between now and the end of the visioning process, I think we have scheduled six, six meetings. So that's uh, about yeah, one meeting a month, uh, okay. hours each, and then whatever homework you can de devote. <laughs> Um, welcome any additional time you can devote to the project. Thank you for your volunteerism. Um, and I believe it's up to me to uh, adjourn uh, everybody, but um, I'm kind of sad to go. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, and please be sure to contact me with any follow up questions, and we'll be sure to get back to you soon. Thank you, folks. Thanks for bearing with us as we work through this virtual platform, and we'll be sure to continue to uh, provide opportunities to, to communicate with us and, and with each other. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, Pete. Good night. Thanks, Steve. Good night. Hey, Pete. Good night, everybody. You guys are awesome. Pete, can I give you a quick call? Uh, yeah, let me send you my phone number. Meeting is closing, guys. Thank you.